host, Scary Pops, and everybody loves a good scare. So let's get into it. I was babysitting for this family and I never was babysitting before and so this is all new to me. And they had a really eerie house. It was all disorganized and there was weird masks everywhere. But anyways, they had three kids and it's about 10 o'clock at night and it got really windy and stormy and then the power went out. So I was freaked out because I was really unfamiliar with the house, didn't know the kids very well. And since TV was no longer an option, we tried to think of things that we could do. Well, the eldest girl, Jillian, started going through my purse and she pulled out my camera and was just taking pictures. Well, the parents came home around 12.30 and I went home. But the next morning I went through the camera to look at the pictures and in the background, there was a man looking through the glass door to the backyard. He was in every picture. My parents had gone out to go to a party to visit some friends, and so I was home alone. And, well, I was just watching some TV, and then all of a sudden I heard a knock on the door. And so I went and opened the main door, but the screen door was locked. And there was a man at the door. He said he was from the gas company and wanted to talk to my parents. But I told him they weren't home. And as soon as I told him that, he tried to start forcing his way into the home. He found the screen door to be locked, so he pulled out a box cutter and started cutting through the screen. I ran, I, I ran as fast as I could upstairs, and I hid in a clothes hamper in the closet. And I sat there for about 10 minutes. Then all of a sudden I heard sirens. Thank God a neighbor saw everything and called the police. Or I probably would be dead. And they found the intruder hiding in the attic. So definitely make sure you lock all your doors and windows when you're home alone. This is something that happened when I was a kid and one of the scariest experiences of my entire life. It all happened on one summer night back when I was about 13. I lived near the city in a highly populated neighborhood. I was used to walking around it and going to local parks to hang out with friends and stuff. Back then, my best friend was probably a kid named Daniel who lived a few blocks away from me. We would hang out all the time, sometimes at each other's houses or sometimes playing basketball at local parks. This was over 10 years ago now, but each summer there's a local carnival in the city. It's pretty standard with all the carnival games and other attractions. Many people go to it from my city and even the neighboring ones. Where we lived, we could walk, but it would take probably 20 minutes to get there. So one day, Daniel and I planned to go to the carnival after school. Our parents both trusted us to be able to go by ourselves because we were teenagers now and it didn't seem like that big of a deal. So after school on that day, which was a Friday, Daniel and I walked to the carnival. It took maybe 30 minutes to get there from school because it was a little out of the way to go home, but it wouldn't be as long to go back to our houses. There was a lot to do at the carnival and Daniel and I spent hours having fun looking at all the attractions. Soon, it got to be nighttime. We went to the carnival games that they had there and played just about every single one. We were really competitive and trying to win the cool prizes like the giant stuffed animals or the sports jerseys. Our parents had given us some money to spend on food and tickets for games and stuff. It was when we had just finished playing one of the games that this guy approached us. The man had grayish hair, a mustache, and asked us how we were doing. It just seemed odd that he was randomly talking to us. Then, he asked us if we needed more tickets. The guy said he could get us some if we wanted. But at that time in particular, we didn't need any tickets, and I think we both found the guy to be kind of weird. 
We told him no thanks, and then he left us alone and walked away. We didn't see the man for a while after that. Daniel and I played a bunch more games for maybe another hour or so. Then we saw the guy again. He approached us this time too, and asked us how much longer we were staying. We just kind of said, I don't know, and the guy asked us where we were going after. We said home. Then we just kind of walked away from the guy. He definitely came across as really strange. After getting away from him and losing him in the crowd of people, Daniel and I talked briefly about the guy. We both agreed that he seemed strange, but overall, we just had a laugh about it. Soon after, Daniel and I headed home. We could walk the majority of the distance together, and the final five minutes or so, he would go one way and I would go the other. We left the carnival and first walked on the sidewalk. The night got darker moving away from the lights, and things got quieter. We were now going farther away from the people. About five minutes into the walk home, we both heard the footsteps behind us. Instinctively, I looked back, and the same guy was walking a ways down the sidewalk. I couldn't tell if he was following us or not, but it was suspicious. I told Daniel about it, and he suggested that we speed up. We both started walking a little faster on the way home. Soon, we had to turn and take another sidewalk. As we did, things got even darker and quieter. The worst part is that soon, we saw the man make the same turn. We continued to hear him walking a ways behind us. Now it was just us and the guy walking. Nobody else was even in sight. We kept going down the road on the way back to our houses. After several more minutes went by, we decided to check behind us again. The man was even closer than before. I was sure that I saw him looking at me as I looked back at him. Daniel and I were convinced that the guy was following us. We decided to figure out what we should do in this situation. The guy was still a ways back, but getting closer. We quietly talked about our possible options. Soon, we approached where Daniel and I would split up, and he would go to his place and I would go to mine. We decided to just run home in separate directions. The guy couldn't chase both of us, and probably wouldn't run if we did. That would be really weird. So Daniel took off and started jogging to his place. He went to the left, and I went to the right to head for mine, and I also started jogging. But to my horror, the man started jogging after me. It looked like Daniel had gotten off, but I would have to lose the man. I looked over my shoulder, and the man was now almost sprinting. I tried to speed up and run faster, but the man was keeping up with me for the most part. I then took a hard left and jumped a fence to one of my neighbor's yards. We were pretty close to my house now. It was only a couple of minutes away. After I got into my neighbor's yard, I ran around to the back and then through their backyard. I was desperate and didn't care if any of my neighbors saw me. In fact, I hoped that they would. But nobody seemed to be outside at that hour, and I went out of their backyard and into the street behind it. I actually heard the man going into the neighbor's yard and I couldn't believe it. I ran like crazy down the street and into another neighbor's backyard. Now I could no longer see the man when I got in there, and I was a little bit farther ahead than I had been before. I got back to the street and then sprinted for my house. By the time I got there, I was out of breath and used my house key to get inside. After getting inside, my mom saw how I was out of breath and I told her what had happened. She then called the police. I looked out the front window to the street, but I didn't see the guy. I'm not sure if he figured out which house was mine or not. After a while, the police got there and they spoke with me and my parents. They searched the neighborhood, but didn't find the man. He must have got out of there after he lost me. The police also went to Daniel's house to talk with him and his parents too. There was a thought that maybe the man would head over there, but he didn't. After this situation, I was afraid to go anywhere by myself for a while. I had walked to and from school every single day, but after the incident, my parents drove me to school and picked me up afterwards. Luckily though, nothing like this happened again, and I haven't seen the man since.